Hello and what is going on today guys, Tomcat here and welcome back to a brand new video in Forza Horizon 3. So we are back in the auction house today and we are going to be looking around to see what we can find in terms of some, uh, some odd and like weird cheap cars. Um, we are going to do it a little bit differently this time because we're actually going to narrow it down to make and, well... I want to say, let's say, I originally was wanting to narrow it down to make and model, but I might just do make. So let's see, <laughs> let's see what we can find Bugatti-wise for under half a million credits. Nothing. Okay. Got it. So let's go back to Bugatti and see how far we have to go. Let's just look Bugatti. Let's just look for him and see what we can find. Hmm... They're all seeming to be in the 2 million range. Like, they literally all seem to be above 2 million. I haven't seen one below 2 million yet. I've seen ones, like, right on the verge of 2 million. But that, like, 2 million seems to be, like, the standard buyout. Like, the, literally, the standard buyout amount, like, seems to be set right there at 2 million. Um, yeah. Alright, well... We could bid on one, but to be fair, I mean, I don't really want any of the Bugattis. I just kind of, like, kind of wanted to look. But let's see what we can find now in terms of... Oh, God. W Motors, Zenvo, car type. Okay, so car type. This is going to be... This is going to be an interesting one because... Let's see. Modern Rally, Classic Muscle, Modern Muscle, Extreme Off-Road... Mm. Let's try Super Saloons, and we'll set our budget at 100k. Because I'm sure we'll get something, okay? So, RS4, XFRS, uh, 1 Series M Coupe, let's see, M4. So, like, your, your standard assortment of BMWs and stuff like that. This M4 is pretty cool. Let's see. I mean, I bet that one is pretty decent at drifting, actually. Uh, let's see. Another M4 S60 Polestar. We've got a good... Ooh, a Q60. Seems to be that, like, around 50, 51 is, like, the general range. This C63S Coupe so is, like, right at 70. But that thing looks like it might be fun. I might have to come back for that. GS350 F Sport... RS5 Cooper 48, but I don't really like it. <laughs> That's the thing. I don't really like it. Um, ISF for 50. Why is that ISF for 50 if it's stock? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Well, that was a hella stock E92 M3. I mean, it's the cheapest one, but but I don't know if I want it because, like I said, it's completely stock and it's kind of meh. This IS350 F Sport is 100,000 credits. Why? It's ugly. It's really ugly. Like, I might end up with it just for the fun of it, but, like, what? Okay, I need to see this thing. I need to, like, open this thing up and actually check it out, because this is by far the riciest thing I think I may have seen on the auction house for a long time. Um, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I, I don't know, I, eh, I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, yeah, let's... Let's back away slowly from that one. Hey, ooh, what's this? Let's see. Hmm. I haven't found anything yet that jumps out at me, you know what I mean? Well, actually, I take that back. This M5 jumps out at me, and it's only... Hmm. It's only 62,000 credits, and it's an S2. So, you can imagine it's going to be really fast. I just don't know how fast. I'm gonna pick it up. I mean, I've never messed with any, like, super fast M5s before. Oh, no! I meant to... I've been doing that a lot lately. Like, meaning to buy it out, and I end up, like, just, you know... Uh, I end up just bidding. And I don't know why I do that, but, like, it's one of those things that, like, ends up being weird, I guess? Alright, let's claim this car. Let's take it out. Let's see what it can do. And also... Figure out if we've bought something that's... Oh, I bet you it's all-wheel drive in V12. Oh. Oh. I bet... Oh. 
I've just now thought of that. I bet you it's all-wheel drive in V12. I would bet you, dude, oh my god, I would bet you so much. Oh my gosh, okay, so let's see. Let's find out if it's all-wheel drive in V12. Yeah, it's all-wheel drive in V12. But we bought it, so we have to use it. Oh, man. Mmm. It's like the worst combo, especially on an M5. It's like, boy, why? Why? Although I suppose that, like, as long as I put a disclaimer here and, like, I actually say, like, a disclaimer, like, like, this is not a good swap at all. I mean, okay, it is a effective swap, but I think the community is so tired of the V12 thing at this point that everybody's like, oh my god, that's disgusting. Like, why? I mean, and it doesn't sound bad, I just think people are tired of hearing it, you know what I mean? Like, people are tired of hearing it, and I think people are also tired of the fact that, like, it's so much more powerful than, like, any other option, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's like, oh, well, you want to go fast, just get the V12. You want to go fast, just get the V12, you know what I mean? So, like, it, it's, it's like when you see a car that's, like, silly, silly fast, you don't even have to think about it. You know it's got the V12. And I feel like that kind of takes out a little bit of the mystery of it, and, I mean, kind of takes out a little bit of the charm of it, too, but... Oh, God, I'm gonna have to get used to this. This is weird! It doesn't... It, like, you can't really, like, counter-steer it like you would a normal... Like you would a normal, like, rear-wheel drive M5. But, I mean, to be fair, I knew that going into it, but we'll, we'll figure out how it does on this drift section coming up. Because, man, I'll tell you something. It's gonna be weird! Oh, jeez. Oh, God. Oh, I went super deep. See, I went super deep into the corner because I figured, I figured the car was going to prefer that. But it didn't. It didn't at all. It's not, that's the thing is, it's not like super, oh, God, I didn't slow. See, I didn't slow down enough. It's not really like, it's not one of those cars that you're like, oh, I know exactly how it's going to work or respond. It's just kind of this weird mixed bag of stuff. Yeah, no, screw that. Screw that. Fell out of the power band and everything. All right, this is my last attempt at this drift zone. My last freaking attempt that I'm going somewhere else. Because I got to get this. No, 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 no. What the? Okay. Keep the RPMs up because obviously it, it like, hates you if you don't. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh. No, not reverse! Oh my god! I am not an all-wheel drive drift guy. We know this. Like, we know this, and I think it's now only a, only more apparent. But, my god, it's just so silly. We are going to try going back the other way. But still, like, it just feels so weird. And I think partially it's down to the tune on this car. And also partially it's like... I mean, it was probably meant to be a drag car, you know what I mean? Because it is fast! There we go! Come on, I'm gonna be like a little bit more on the conservative side this time. Ah, that sucked though. Just kind of lost all my rhythm. That's like 110, 115. So like 124K on the way back up. That's not bad. That's decent. I feel like I could destroy that score if I did it going back down. But like, it's such a weird car that like you have to literally tell yourself that it's different than everything else. You have to tell yourself it's different than everything else. And I think, you know, partially, like I understand though why people, you know, like hate setups like this. Because, I mean, you saw how easy it was with, like, a so-so, like, kind of whatever performance. We managed over 120K, you know what I mean? And, like, and, like, it just, we just kind of had to, like, let the car do its thing. And that, I can see how that would, like, upset people, you know what I mean? Personally, I would adjust the front rear bias if it was me, but, again, I didn't make this tune. Again, I, like, screwed up on the way down the hill and still managed 104K. 
So, I think, I think, yeah, it's not, you know, it's weird. It's like when you try to drive it like, like you would drive something, you know, that's rear-wheel drive that you have to use, like, some real intention to drive and you actually have to focus in on it. Like, when you drive it like that, it's gonna suck. But when you drive it like it's on autopilot, that's when it works. You know what I mean? Like... You know, just kind of minimal, when you drive it, like, minimal effort, like, and you just drive it super lazy, like this, I'm not even counter steering. Like, when you drive it super lazy, then it, that's where it works. And I think that's why people don't like setups like this, and why setups like this make people angry. Because it works better, it works better when you drive lazy. I mean, it really does. It works better when you drive it lazy. And, like, it's weird because you don't really consider it to be a, uh... You don't really consider it to be, like, a valid driving technique, but, like, I think that's why so many people get upset about it, is because they feel like they put, you know, they put... Oh, uh, really? See, that's one of those times where it's like you have nowhere to go. You got a traffic car on one side, you got, you know, you got driver cars on the other side of the road. It's like, again, I think that's another reason why people don't like setups like this, is because they feel like they put in so much work on their other setups, and then somebody with, like, an all-wheel drive comes in, like, all-wheel drive, 1,500 horsepower, comes in and drives it super lazy, and, you know, still puts down a high score. So, yeah, I can see where it would make people kind of upset. But, I mean, for me, it was kind of even harder to adjust to this car, because I'm used to cars that you have to, like, you know, you have to focus in on, you have to manage, like, the way they drive. I mean, they're rear-wheel drive. And it's more fun that way. That's the other thing, is, like, I have way more fun driving the rear-wheel drive for drift cars. I mean, like or driving, drifting rear-wheel drive cars, what, like, whatever, what have you. I mean, it's it's just so much more fun, like, to do that, like, to me. And, and like, ah, no, 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 no. Find your way back to a road, please. I would really, like, appreciate that. But, no, like, those cars are just so much more fun to me because you actually have to, like, you know, do something, you know? It doesn't feel like you're just putting the car on autopilot and just, like, right, right now, I'm just flooring it in first and not even touching the steering. Like, I just kind of loaded the car up where I wanted it, and then just floored it, and let go of the steering, and let it go. So, like, I like cars that you feel like you actually kind of get, you know, connected with when you drive. And I don't think you really get, I mean, you get, a, you get connected with this to a certain degree. Now, to be fair, I'm not, you know, saying this about cars like the Hoonicorn, right? The Hoonicorn is a different kind of car. The Hoonicorn is its own thing, and it's a very interesting car. It's a very, you know, different car. It's a weird car. It's an exception to the tree. Uh, but no, it's an exception to the rule when it comes to this whole all-wheel drive drift, you know, or, like, anti-all-wheel drive drift, like, culture, I think. Um, because, like, ever since, you know, like, freaking Forza Horizon, like, not even Horizon 2, but, like, Forza 2, like, Motorsport 2, you know, drifting in all-wheel drive was one of those things where it's like, no, you don't do that. Like, seriously, it was like, no, you don't do that. Unless you're, like, a, like a, like a montage maker or something? You know, then then you don't do that. And I think, like, it, it, it migrated its way to different parts of the community and then eventually just kind of became overall accepted. I mean, like, to be fair, yeah, Domestic Mango does all sorts of crazy, like, all-wheel drive Gymkhana stuff, like, videos and builds and stuff like that. And that's different, you know what I mean? Like, that's, like, legit, like, Gymkhana-style stuff. But he uses the all-wheel drive in a certain way that, like, he's really taking full advantage of it. Whereas most of the people... That, that, you know, will do, like, all-wheel drive V12 swap cars and use them for drifting, I say with quotation marks. Um, it's kind of like, it's kind of like easy mode in a lot of ways, and I think that's why people normally get, you know, they get on to people about that, but, I mean, at the end of the day, like, would I drive this car again? Eh, probably not. I mean, it's, it's definitely not a super, wow, hi. It's not a super memorable car. Uh, it's not a super memorable like, experience, if you want to call it that, but at the same time, I mean, like, I don't know, it's weird, like, it's effective for what it does, but it's also not, you know, anything, like, that I'm gonna look at and go, that's insanely special, like, I don't really get any, like, super special vibe from this car, it's just kind of like, it feels more like you just put the V12 in it, and put the all-wheel drive in it just to do it, rather than having an actual objective behind doing it. And that's just my personal opinion. I mean, I'm sure there's other opinions out there about cars like this, but, again, 
Again, I know I kind of roasted the car a little bit, but that's just me. So, if you guys enjoyed this auction house drift video, don't forget to click that like button. Tell me in the comments below what y'all thought of it. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time. Talk to y'all later.